Welcome back to Monitors Unbox. Today we're taking a look at ASUS's brand new 1440p 300Hz gaming monitor, the ROG Strix XG27AQMR. Did you think the PG27AQN was too expensive, offering 1440p 360Hz for a whopping $1,050 US? Well, the XG27AQMR might be what you're after instead, as this 300Hz variant will save you $400 US versus the AQN. That's a pretty substantial saving, but there's still question marks over whether it's worth it versus the current crop of 240Hz options, which we'll explore throughout this review. The basics to the XG27 AQMR, aside from its mouthful of a name, is a 27-inch 2560 by 1440 IPS panel with a maximum refresh rate of 300Hz. Conveniently, on the ASUS website, they tell you this is above 144Hz in case you weren't aware that 300 is bigger and better than 144. ASUS are also providing G-Sync compatible and FreeSync Premium Pro branding, as well as VESA Display HDR600 certification. Of more interest to me is the listing of Variable Overdrive and ELMB Sync. Despite this display not featuring a native G-Sync module, we are still getting Variable Overdrive, which will hopefully improve response time performance. All of this is available for $650, US which is in the mid-range of 1440p high refresh rate gaming monitors, but also on the more expensive end of the spectrum for monitors overall. Very interesting positioning here given the current state of the market, and we'll talk about that a bit later. As an ASUS ROG product, we are getting a variation of their classic gamer monitor design. It's not identical to other products, but it's pretty similar, with angular patterns and vents on the rear, PCB trace style design elements, and the thick stand pillar with three-pronged legs. The main difference compared to ROG Swift products is the elimination of RGB LED lighting. There are no RGB LEDs here on the Strix, but that's a good thing as far as I'm concerned. I also like how ASUS in their more recent ROG designs has removed the red slash copper highlights in the stand. This gives the display a more neutral look overall, which I think will fit in better with most people's setups given how many people like to choose their own accent colours these days. The overall build quality is quite good despite my general lukewarm feelings about the design itself. The outer surfaces are mostly a plain plastic, the seams are all neat and tidy, plus the overall stand assembly is sturdy with little wobble. It achieves this while also including a good range of ergonomic adjustments, supporting all of height, tilt, swivel, and pivot. With that said, I would have appreciated a bit more height than the maximum on offer here. On the port front, it's a bit of a mixed bag. We get one display port 1.4 with DSC, perfectly fine for PC use at 1440p 300Hz. But the HDMI ports are just version 2.0, not 2.1, so they are limited to 144Hz. Not a huge deal for console use that would likely run at only 120Hz anyway, but it means that only one of the three inputs supports the highest refresh rate and resolution simultaneously. What if you wanted to hook up two PCs to this monitor? Unfortunately, they can't both be run at 300Hz because the HDMI ports aren't 2.1 when really they should be. HDMI 2.1 has been around for long enough now. On a more positive note, ASUS continues to have a feature-rich OSD with gamer-specific features like crosshairs, a sniper mode, FPS counters which are particularly useful for display testing, shadow boosting modes and a good array of color controls, all accessible through a fast interface and directional toggle. There's also some good quality of life settings here, such as the ability to disable DSC, which I know some people want to see in more monitors. The only more modern feature that's missing here is probably a KVM switch, which we are seeing more often in products like this. Motion performance is obviously a key reason why you'd purchase a 300Hz monitor, so let's take a look. ASUS offer a good range of control here with 5 variable overdrive settings plus an off mode, but thankfully it's also straightforward to recommend which setting is the best. The off mode is probably not that mode, offering zero overshoot but with an average response time of 9.3 milliseconds. That isn't going to excite anyone playing at the maximum refresh rate. As we move through level 1, level 2, and level 3 overdrive, we get varying levels of performance between 7 and 5 milliseconds for response times and minimal overshoot. Each successive increase in mode delivers better cumulative deviation, and a few weird results where some transitions are fast but neighbouring transitions aren't as fast. I thought this was quite weird, but I've triple checked the results and it indeed performs like this. Not a huge deal for visuals anyway. 
It's actually the level 4 mode that's the best overall. Performance is around 1 millisecond better than the level 3 mode, moving to 4.3 milliseconds on average at the maximum refresh rate. However, due to the high number of transitions that are more in the 2 millisecond range, we get refresh compliance above 50%, which is what we look for. Average cumulative deviation of 320 is also very good for an LCD, and this is achieved with minimal overshoot. Pushing higher than this setting to level 5 just introduces a lot of overshoot to get the average response time up to 3.2 milliseconds, which for most gamers won't be worth it. What's good to see is that the AQMR indeed supports variable overdrive, and it does a great job at managing response time performance to minimize visual issues across the refresh rate range. For example, the monitor starts off with around a 4.3 millisecond average response with an average error of 4%. By the time we hit 200Hz, variable overdrive has already gotten to work, massaging performance so the response is 5 milliseconds, and an average error rate has actually been reduced. This level of performance continues to around 120Hz, then there are further tweaks to most of the lower refresh rates to keep everything in check. At no point does the inverse ghosting rate exceed 15%, response times are at most in the 5 millisecond range, and cumulative deviation does not blow out massively down near 60Hz, which is common for monitors without variable overdrive. This means this monitor does have a single overdrive mode experience. You should set it to level 4 and forget about it. Performance is excellent at both the maximum 300Hz refresh rate and all the way down to 60Hz. This is exactly what we like to see from premium gaming monitors, and it's great we are getting full variable overdrive without the use of a G-Sync module. It's always been possible, it's just that most display vendors don't bother with it. When compared to other monitors at their maximum refresh rates and best overdrive settings, the XG27 AQMR performs well, but doesn't take a lead over other fast IPS monitors of today. Performance is very similar to the ASUS PG279QM for example, but it is superior to the Gigabyte M27QX thanks to less overshoot. Ultimately, it isn't as fast as the flagship 360Hz PG27 AQN either, suggesting the panel used here is closer to other 240Hz displays than the best of the best right now. Strong levels of performance continue when looking at the average across the refresh range. The XG27 AQMR hits 5 milliseconds, which is a good result. There isn't a particular standout compared to, say, the MAG274 QRX from MSI, though this ASUS does have a higher refresh rate. It's similar to the PG279QM in overall performance though, which is a decent result given that display is a premium 240Hz offering, and once again it's superior to monitors like the Gigabyte M27QX, which are a step behind. While the AQMR might be more of a mid-table monitor in our response time charts, this display has an excellent balance between speed and overshoot, which leads to very good cumulative deviation and a corresponding high position in this chart among LCDs. The overall experience is actually quite similar to the PG27 AQN, which had faster response times but more overshoot, though we are yet to test the latest firmware update for that monitor. The AQMR is also a step better than the previous monitors such as the PG279QM and other premium 240Hz products, while being 32% better than the M27QX. The AQMR also offers a good experience gaming at 120Hz, although this probably isn't why you'd buy a 300Hz monitor. Similarly, at 60Hz this is one of the better performing displays thanks to variable overdrive working its magic, but if you're after a monitor for 60Hz gaming you should probably consider something a bit cheaper with less refresh rate headroom. Input latency is strong thanks to its high refresh rate and minimal processing delay. There is a small advantage in responsiveness going for 300Hz versus 240Hz, and there's a small advantage again bumping up to 360Hz. You'd have to be a serious pro to notice these differences in my opinion, but nevertheless it's good to confirm there are no latency issues with this product. Power consumption is very good, this display uses just 23 watts to display a 200 nit full white image, which is among the best results for a 27 inch 1440p monitor that I've tested. However, it's not massively better than other monitors, we're talking about just a few watts which isn't going to make a significant difference. The XG27 AQMR supports backlight strobing technology in the form of ELMB Sync, which has a strong set of capabilities. The feature works from 300Hz down to 90Hz, so unfortunately no 60Hz strobing, but still a good range there. The sync part also means it works alongside adaptive sync simultaneously, although you can also use it at fixed refresh rates. In the sync mode, you can only change the position of optimal clarity, so strobe timing, while in the non-sync mode, you get the additional ability to tweak strobe length for better clarity. 
Actual performance is a bit of a mixed bag. When using ELMB sync specifically, so with adaptive sync enabled, motion clarity isn't really improved at all. It does work, but there's noticeable strobe crosstalk and just some blur as the strobe length is too long. This is especially visible at lower refresh rates. So for example, setting the monitor to 300 Hertz, but actually using it at 144 Hertz, ELMB sync doesn't provide much improvement at all, despite attempting to sync the refresh and strobe. The ELMB mode without adaptive sync works better, especially at clarity level 5. This configuration does provide a clarity improvement at 300Hz with only minimal crosstalk and a bit of red fringing due to the backlight being used. It ends up working quite well at all fixed refresh rates, but particularly so at 144 to 120Hz, although with increased red fringing. This is probably the way to use it for esports gaming if you can manage a consistent high frame rate in your game. However, even in the ELMB mode, I wouldn't say this is the best backlight strobic configuration. The BenQ XL 2566K is clearer and does so at a higher refresh rate with no fringing, albeit at just 1080p. The AQMR also isn't that bright using the best clarity mode at just 167 nits, though this can be increased to 420 nits using level 1 clarity, which doesn't look nearly as good. Moving on now to color performance, and the AQMR is a wide gamut monitor sporting 95% DCI-P3 coverage, which is pretty good, though slightly below the 97% that Asus quote. There's no real meaningful extension of greens to support Adobe RGB, and overall Rec 2020 coverage is 71%, on the lower side for modern wide gamut gaming monitors, though still acceptable. Color accuracy though was surprisingly decent with a great range of control. The default mode shipped with good grayscale accuracy, a delta E average of 5.6 is slightly above average, and although a gamut clamp is not enabled by default, we're only seeing modest oversaturation and reasonable delta E's. It isn't as well calibrated as the Elite PG27AQN, but it ends up sitting in the upper echelon of our factory calibration charts. The AQMR ships with a very good sRGB mode though, so if you want a more accurate experience for SDR applications and games, that's the mode to choose. Grayscale Delta E's improved to a 3.14 average, which is very good, while saturation and color checker are also excellent. This is above average performance among gaming monitors I've tested, and right up there with some of the best sRGB modes. What's great to see is that ASUS also gives you full freedom to adjust performance in the OSD while keeping the gamut clamp enabled. You can easily flick between sRGB, DCI-P3 and wide gamut modes without any restrictions to color temperature controls or other settings, so further tweaks are possible to improve performance. With these capabilities, I was able to improve Delta E's by one unit on average thanks to this capability, dropping the color checker average from 4.05 to 3.06 for an sRGB configuration, and this is why all manufacturers should allow this. A further software calibration through Calman was able to tidy up all the loose ends and deliver excellent calibration for both sRGB and P3 uses. For P3, it doesn't quite have full gamut coverage, so the very edges of the gamut aren't going to be accurate, but overall getting a calibrated experience from this monitor is a breeze, and with most of the effort taking place in hardware, it applies to many applications. Maximum brightness in the SDR mode sits at 380 nits, which is mid-range for gaming monitors. Some of the best approach near 500 nits, which this monitor is actually capable of in the HDR mode, is just limited for SDR. Minimum brightness is good at 48 nits. As for contrast ratio, the AQMR is pretty good in this area for an IPS LCD reporting in at 1328 to 1, which is quite a bit higher than ASUS's other premium high refresh rate 1440p monitors, the PG27AQN and PG279QM. It's not an earth shattering difference, but I'll take a roughly 30% improvement every time. Unfortunately though, IPS LCD contrast is still poor overall among monitor tech, VA LCDs are much better. And then of course we have OLEDs these days as well, which provide a night and day improvement. Uniformity was average from my unit, the centre section of the display was okay, but there were a few issues with the outer edges. I also noticed a bit of IPS glow from my unit, which tends to be a unit by unit issue, and so you could end up with a different experience to me. Still, this panel does not use any of the newer IPS glow minimization techniques we're seeing from the latest LG panels. The XG27 AQMR does support HDR and is a Display HDR600 certified monitor, however the actual HDR capabilities are poor and really not worth considering when buying this display. We're only getting edge lit local dimming here with very few zones, I think there's only 8 zones but it's hard to tell as the zones are almost always fully active, more so than similar edge lit monitors. 
This level of dimming leads to raised blacks and a terrible contrast ratio for HDR, completely insufficient for true HDR visuals. Any sort of dark content or shadow detail looks rubbish here, which makes it hard to call this even semi-HDR as the edge lit zones just aren't used enough. On a positive note, brightness is reasonable, though not amazing. We get a maximum of 670 nits in pretty much all situations, whether that's large or small window sizes, sustained or peak. In real scenes, this leads to brightness a touch over 600 nits, whether we are gaming or watching videos. Some people will like this experience as the level of brightness is enhanced versus the SDR mode, but without decent local dimming, what it really means is the entire panel is raised in brightness, destroying blacks and shadow detail and preventing a true high contrast HDR experience. I did appreciate that ASUS went to the effort of calibrating the HDR mode, so EOTF tracking and saturation sweeps are reasonably accurate, all things considered. You won't see crazy brightness issues or incorrect saturation, like you do get with a lot of other sort of semi-HDR or fake HDR monitors, but the overall HDR experience is poor, simply because the hardware capabilities for proper HDR are not found here. Final section is the Hub Essentials checklist. Across the design and color sections, ASUS does well, only receiving a penalty due to using HDMI 2.0 instead of HDMI 2.1. For motion performance, advertising a 1 millisecond response time does exaggerate the display's typical performance, however the best transitions I tested were in the 1 millisecond range. I also don't think the backlight strobing quality is sufficient, however I was impressed with the single overdrive mode experience and low input lag. The other penalties ASUS receive are in the HDR section. While edge lit dimming normally receives a semi-HDR ranking, the actual experience here, even with edge lit, is awful, so that's worthy of a penalty. The contrast ratio is also far too low thanks to a pathetic zone count. However, I didn't spot any issues or defects here. We're getting a normal subpixel array, and flickering is not a problem while gaming. The ASUS ROG Strix XG27 AQMR ends up being quite a decent gaming monitor with a lot going for it. But like with many mid-range product reviews, I find it pretty difficult to say whether you should or shouldn't buy it. Often it comes down to whether incremental improvements are worth it versus a lower or higher priced monitor, and that's what you'll have to weigh up with the AQMR. What I can say is this monitor delivers a strong premium feature set in its class. The major feature that I really liked seeing was functional variable overdrive. I feel that is a bigger inclusion than the 300Hz refresh rate. It allows for a great single overdrive mode experience, it's well tuned across the refresh rate range, and the balance is good enough to put it among the best LCDs in terms of speed and clarity. Thanks to this feature and its refresh rate, the AQMR is a step above most other 240Hz monitors in motion performance. ASUS have enhanced this through backlight strobing, although less so ELMB sync and more just the regular ELMB feature. I like this feature is included here because some 1440p high refresh monitors just don't include it at all, and while it's nothing special from a performance standpoint, at least esports gamers have the option, and it does enhance clarity especially at lower refresh rates. It's not class leading though, so I suspect those that must have elite strobing will still prefer something like the XL 2566K, despite its lower resolution. I was also impressed with the range of color controls and the color accuracy on offer here, which means the AQMR is good for both multiplayer and single player gaming. It has good versatility. The HDR experience is terrible, though right now there are no competitors in this price range offering HDR that are worth buying, at least that I've tested so far. The big question comes down to the price and whether the AQMR is worth it at $650 US. In the current market, that's not a crazy price. There are lots of 1440p 240Hz monitors being sold for around $600 to $700 US, but it's also not a bang for buck type of product, which we've seen more in the $400 to $500 range. What makes this difficult is that some of our favorite picks here, like the M27QX and MAG274QRX, have been out of stock for months. So it's harder to compare the AQMR to a $500 type of monitor that you can't buy right now. At the same time, it's important to be aware of these monitors because it tells us what has been possible at a variety of price points. Ultimately, I feel $650 is a fair price for what you're getting. The difference between 300 and 240Hz isn't massive, a 25% increase isn't worth paying top dollar for, but when you combine this with its overall motion performance and color accuracy, I do think it's worth the premium over more basic options we've recommended on the channel previously. It's 30% more than a $500 product of similar specs. That's okay as far as I'm concerned, and as I said, a fair price without being a must-buy. What would really get 
get me excited is this performance for more like $550 US, which would be a killer product, but again, $650 is okay. It also makes sense that the AQMR is priced much closer to 240Hz options than its flagship brother, the PG27 AQN at 360Hz. Were this priced more in the middle, closer to the PG27 AQN at $1050 US, there would be no point buying it, you just pay the extra for the AQN. But with the AQN still being very expensive and a niche product because of that reason, getting somewhat close to that experience for $400 less seems like an okay deal. Anyway, that's it for this review of the XG27 AQMR. Bit of a mouthful there from ASUS. Please shorten those names for future versions. It will save me a lot of time in these reviews. If you do appreciate our coverage of monitors like this, our testing, our independent nature, and the way we conduct our reviews and all that sort of stuff, please do consider supporting the channel. The best way to do that, the best free way to do that, is just by subscribing, giving this video a like. But we also have Patreon and Floatplane available if you want to directly support the channel, you want to support the work that we're doing, then you get some cool bonuses like our Discord community, monthly live streams, BTS videos, all that sort of good stuff. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.